So the first thing we want to do is set our tarp out, grab the weight bag, weight it, weight it down so that the tarp doesn't fly away. Next thing we're going to do is start grabbing tanks. We're going to stick tanks <coughs> on that far end over there where the green weight is at. We're going to line them up and Marco's going to tell you how, how he wants them done and the reason why. Here, speak up, Mike. Okay. Tanks go on the tarp. The valve's facing in. That way, if you go to get, get a cylinder, you're looking for one that's facing in. When a cylinder is swapped out, the valve goes to the outside. Okay. It makes for a long day when you pick up the cylinder, let's valve to the inside, and you hook up the diver and you find out it's empty. Yeah, to get you yield. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to tell you something about our tanks that, that's a little, little bit different. <coughs> our tanks have got these black caps on them, okay? If the cap is in the valve, that tank is full. If the, tank, if the cap is out of the valve, that tank has been used. Doesn't necessarily mean it's empty but that tank has been used, okay? This is a no-no. Why is this a no-no? Because they fall over and hit the break that valve. And now they're a missile. Yep. Now they're a missile. We don't ever, ever leave tanks standing up unattended, okay? Right now it's fine because I'm, I'm tending to the tanks, but especially on uneven ground, we don't leave tanks unattended because if they fall over and this valve breaks off, these things are under 3,000 pounds of pressure, okay? So we don't want to leave those unattended. This is important, especially for Daryl. Daryl, we get on a dive site, and we're doing a, uh, a rescue mission or, or whatever. We set up a dive site, and we start burning through tanks. I'm going to ask if one of your guys can start coming, picking up tanks, taking them to the station, filling them, and bringing them back, okay? This is important for Daryl to know. Daryl's gonna start training as the dive supervisor, okay? Daryl is gonna tell Joe Blow on Fairdale Fire Department, I need you to come pick up tanks and refill them. He's gonna know, grab this tank and go because this tank is empty or has been used, okay? Because it is facing the other direction. The rest of you that are training as dive assistants, dive tenders, and divers, when you're going to set up your dive gear, are going to know when it's time to change a tank out to come up, grab a tank that's facing in, because that is a full tank, and set it up on the new set of gear. Okay? Next, I've got a pile of gear over here. We're going to go over what the gear is uh, and where that gear is supposed to go on this tarp. Okay? So first things first, I've got two medical bags, all right? The orange is an O2 kit, the red is a trauma bag. These are going to be staged at Incident Command. Incident Command is going to be under this tarp at this table here, all right? So O2 is going to go next to the table, and the trauma bag is going to go next to uh, or in front of the table, either or, like that. Incident Command is going to be our staging area for medical medical personnel, uh, medical advice, okay? Marco, Marco's pointing to you where, where he wants, wants it at. So somebody grab the O2 kit, somebody grab the, uh, the trauma bag, and go ahead and set, set those up. Alright, can anybody take a guess at what else is needed at the medical station other than a medical bag and O2. Someone trained in medical stuff? Yeah, we, we need that. What else do we need? Uh, waters for drinking refreshments, maybe if somebody comes up and needs something to drink. Yep, all right, so we got a cooler over here. I had a lot of sun, a lot of heat. We probably get as much in shade as possible. Yep. Okay, what else are we, there's, there's one key item that, that we're missing that is in this pile that goes with the medical gear. 
Anybody take a wild guess, and I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's not that pelican case. Uh, the platform step stools. No, sir, that's going to go over in our dive area. Okay. This is this bag here. That's my dry suit. Dry suit? Is it the extra dive tender bag? Yes, it is. Why? Because there's always another dive tender on standby. Close. Man, All right. Trouble to come out. Don't throw it out there too. A throw bag. Exactly. All right. So this is our dive <clears throat> tender bag. This is going to go in our staging area at over here on the tarp okay this is our dive tender bag it's got the hook <coughs> to attach to a dive tender and the harness okay this dive bag is a throw bag all right throw bag meaning if you have a diver in distress okay or if you've got somebody in the water that's in distress or needs help your first option is to throw them a rope a throw bag okay so you would throw this rope at them and if they can grab the rope, then you can pull them in. If not, then we send a safety diver or safety swimmer or something like that. So this is also is gonna go with the medical gear because that's emergency response, okay? If we had one of them lifeguard uh, uh, Baywatch red red deals, we'd, we'd stick that over there. A rescue can? A rescue can, we'd, we'd throw that over there as well. So okay. We use a rescue can. We use a rope. We use a uh, life hook. Life hook. Okay. Yep. We you use some. You don't grab somebody because they will grab you. All right. So there's <clears throat> there's an element of escalation. Preservers, ropes, shepherd hooks, and then ultimately you grab them. So there's progression. Just run, reach, throw, roll, go. There you go. That's right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our dive area for for us uh, setting up and, and gearing up our dive area. First thing that's going to go out is the bench, and we're going to stick that as, as close to the uh, the center, but away from the the tanks where we got working area as possible. You got it? Yep. Okay. You want it set up on the tarp? On yeah. the tarp, yes, sir. Sand, dirt, dust, all that stuff. Hey, Marco, yes, sir. leave it there for just a second. Yeah. Lock, go ahead and lock it like you're doing, but, but leave it there for a second. Okay, now Neil put that in the center just like I told him, right? And he put it away from the tanks where we can work. But why is that the wrong location to put that? You need to be more tarp around you. you. need more tarp around me, why? Because getting stuff on, trying to keep it clean so you don't get nothing <coughs> in your, your equipment. Your mask and all that stuff. Keep coming, Neil. Keep coming. Right, right in the there. center. All right. right there. All right. Number one reason is because today you got two divers. Okay. You have one bench. So diver number one is going to be on this side of the bench. Okay. Diver number two is going to be on the other side of the bench. All right. Where's our gear going to go? It's going to go on one side of the. Right here and right here okay my dive gear goes to my left marco's dive gear goes to his left all right why is that because why does it go on the left because one thing is is if you got them both on the same side you're going to conflict when you you're going to conflict on. but why is it important to go on the left there's a there's one major reason why it goes on the left and it has to do with that dry suit. On that dry suit, there's a vent valve. It's on the left arm. Okay. Okay. That vent valve is very, very important. Anything happens to that vent valve, I die. Okay. That vent valve is what vents the air out of that dry suit and keeps it from blowing up and me rocketing to the surface. Okay. So it keeps me from looking like a state puff marshmallow man. All right. If that vent valve gets ripped off, one of two things happens. The air doesn't have a way to escape, or my suit fills up with water and I sink to the bottom. Okay, so the vent valve is very, very important. So when you're putting on your diver's gear, guess what? The left arm goes on first. Okay, that way you're not struggling 
struggling to get that left arm in there and you wind up ripping that valve off. The left arm goes in first, okay? And then you use the chicken wing method, okay? This arm here by your side, tucked in and goes straight back around and out, okay? So I'm gonna do that again, chicken wing method right here, straight back, in, around, and out, okay? But the left arm always goes in first, all right? So, next thing, we're gonna look at gear. This is the BCD, buoyancy <clears throat> compensator device, okay? Tank goes on this side. I <clears throat> go on this side, all right? This is gonna go over my left shoulder. It's gonna go over my right shoulder, all right? So, when we're setting up dive gear, this is the top, this is the bottom. How do I want this oriented on my left side? The uh, top away from you. You want that gear over here on this left side, back this one. So yeah, and then the, here, you put it. You put it how you think it goes. Why? Daryl's exactly right, and I'm gonna show you why. As soon as I sit down, <coughs> Daryl can pick that up with minimal effort. Stick my left arm in. I chicken wing. I go straight back. Push it forward. all the way out. I'm crying. You're good. Oh, like that. Well, there that will help. Down and around. And now I'm set. I'll stand, I'll stand up. I'm good to go. All right. I have a question for you. If he had set this <clears throat> like this, and I'm sitting here, Go to put that on me, Daryl. What does he got to do? He's got to pick it up and turn around, doesn't he? Okay? So, if he lays it like he did, all he's got to do is step behind it, pick it up, stick my left arm in, and help me chicken wing the other side. Okay? All right. So, next. How do we set up a diver's gear on the left side. And what I mean by how do we set it up, when we're setting up gear, everything that's gonna go on that diver, everything is gonna be in a pile stacked right here, okay? So how do we organize that pile? First to last. Last what? to first. Last to first. Last to first. So the last thing that goes on that diver is on the very bottom of that pile. The first thing that goes on that diver is on the very top of that pile. That's what I meant, yeah. Okay? All the way up to the diaper. Okay? So if we're going to be diving for a long time and the diver's got to wear <clears> the <throat> pins, the, diver, the, the, the diaper goes on top. Okay? All right. So today we're going to go ahead and put a tank on this. We're going to get a regular eater put on this. We'll put it on the bottom and then we'll start working our way up. All right. All right. So first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is we're going to go over tank uh, today because I've got two new people um, and I've got uh, fire chief here. We're going to go over some tank markings. Okay. Uh, especially for you uh, because you're going to be helping us refill our tanks. Uh, so we're going to go over some tank markings on this tank. All right. It has to have a DOT number, okay? That's for transportation. That DOT number is just like a, a kind of like a serial number for transporting the tank, okay? It does say DOT in front of the numbers, right? It's got to say DOT in front of the numbers. DOT 3AA. 3AA means that this is a steel tank, all right? <clears throat> These over here, if you look at... Uh, uh, Daryl, grab grab one of those uh, blue or uh, yellow tanks. That blue one's fine. 
after that DOT number, what does that say after the DOT number? DOT 3A. So that's got L. That's got one A on it. That means that's an aluminum tank. Okay. This has got two A's, which means it's a steel tank. All right. So next we're going to look at the pressure <coughs> after the A. What what's your number after the A? I got an L. And then. Then three zero 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 A. All right. So that three thousand is what that tank can be pressurized safely up to. So that's a 3,000 PSI tank. This tank here has got a 3,180. Okay, so I can go up to 3,100 PSI. Here's a kicker though. Daryl, find your um, hydro stamp on that. You know what a hydro stamp looks <coughs> like? This right here, that's the test date. So our, when he bought it, and it says five of twenty-one. Five of twenty-one. What are 21. the what are those four numbers in the center, Daryl? Uh, what do they represent? You don't have to read them off. What do I they don't represent? Know. Okay, those four numbers in the center of the hydro represents the tester. That's his engineering test stamp. Okay, the five twenty-one is when it was hydroed. Okay, which hydro tested, which means it's good for how many years? Five years. Five years, and then it's got to be tested again. All right, take a look at. Let me hold that tank, since we're we're standing it up. You come a look at this hydro, and tell me what is different about that hydro. <clears throat> Behind it, and I have no idea what that is. That's a plus. Plus. That's a plus sign. So if you're hydro, when you're looking at these, okay and you're reading this hydro date, if there is a plus sign <clears throat> at the end of that hydro, that means that this is a plus tank, meaning that it, it can safely be pressurized 10% over manufacturer rating. Does that make sense, Daryl? Mm -hmm. So you take that 3180, add 10% to it, and that's what this tank can be pressurized up to. Does everybody understand that? Those are the main markings on a tank. Yeah. I got a question. So um, aluminum versus the steel, is yes. there a difference in the time that it has to be rehydroed? So is it five across the board? Five across the board. Okay. Yep. Five across the board. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there a difference between the steel and the aluminum in what kind of pressure it can handle? Is the steel the steel can handle larger pre or higher pressures, I'm guessing? Typically, you will never see a plus stamp on an aluminum. You will only see a plus stamp on a steel tank. Okay. okay? Uh, the only time you're going to see a pressure difference on a dive tank uh, is if it's a low pressure tank. Okay. If it's rated for low pressure, it's going to be a, a, a lower pressure down in the, the 2000s versus a 3000. Uh, nobody on our team carries low pressure tanks. So uh, all of ours are high pressure, which is which is minimum of 3,000 psi. Okay, so those are the important markings. The next is is your uh, visual inspection sticker. Okay, your visual inspection is is done yearly. Okay, and that's where they take this valve off, they scope the inside, and put it back together and repressurize it. And they're looking for any divots, rust. Uh, anything like that and they will stamp it <clears throat> when it's actually done okay so it's good for a year so this one was done 12 of 20 December the 20, 20? yep so, so te technically it's due for a visual you said every three years I clicked the wrong thing visual inspection is every year every, every year. year okay technically this one's due for a new visual that's where they take the valve off mm -hmm. do a camera do a camera and put it back on. Put it back on. Yep. Yep. Boy, if it rusts inside that, you breathe that stuff in, it's gonna make you cause some problems for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. So that's that's the 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 basics on a tank. So now what goes on the tank? That is our first stage. 
Okay? This piece right here, without the hoses, is called a first stage. Okay? What this does is it reduces the pressure of this tank from 3,000 PSI to typically 150 to 200 PSI. Okay? So that we're able to breathe this. So this is called the first stage. All right? Um, Michael, are you all den now or are you have some yoke? Are you all den now or do you have some yoke? Oh, I'm all den. You're all den, okay. Everybody on our team has got a den connection, okay? A den connection <clears throat> is where the first stage has got a screw like device that physically screws in to this tank. Before you go in, any more question. Okay. Does that have a gasket on the end of it? It does. So if you look, I'm going to make sure it's there. If you look on the inside, there's nothing there, right? Correct. Okay. You look on the den valve, all right? You see that O ring? With the little uh, whitish, off white. Off white. You want to make sure that that O ring is on there before you stick it in here. If it does not have an O ring and you pressure this up, you'll know real quick. You'll know real quick. Get that hand tight. Hand tight. Right there. Okay? Now, a yoke, and I'm just going over this for new divers and uh, people that don't know. A yoke is a different type of connection. And you will notice on this tank, there's not a place to screw in that den valve. Right? Okay, that's because it's got what we call a donut in it. All right? This donut will come out and you will screw the den in. All right, a yoke actually sits over the top of this. This is what a yoke. It's like on, on an old food tank. That's this what I was about a, to say. This is a den to yoke adapter. All right, so this is your den connection. This is your yoke connection. Your yoke connection actually physically sits over the top of the tank and screws in from the back. Uh, right there, screw in your uh, gasket is in the tank. Now the gasket is in the tank and not on the connection. So you would be looking at the donut <clears throat> To see, there's a, a gasket inside that donut. That's green. This one's green. Okay, so there's a gasket inside there. Okay, everybody see that? Right. While we're while we're talking about gaskets, what color is that one? Looks like almost brown. What's the difference between a white, brown, black, and green gasket? Type of uh, air. More specific. Type of pressure? Nope. How a, black, concentration? a black or a clear gasket is for standard breathing air. If you have a brown or a green gasket, that is for oxygen enriched air, so it is O2 clean and it is safe to use with enriched oxygen air. So that's what that gasket, that's the difference in the colors of the gaskets. Okay, so you would not put an oxygen rich concentration mix on something that does not have a brown or a green gasket on it. Okay? When you're setting up when you're setting up gear. Okay? Everybody good with that? Alright, so next we're gonna go to the second stage. We talked about the first stage. Next we're gonna go to the second stage. I took that off to, and, do you have to set the regulator up on the BCD first before putting the cylinder on? You have to set your first stage up on the cylinder before you put the BCD on. Before you put the BCD on. Before you put the BCD on. That's why we're going over this first. Then we'll go over setting the BCD up. Does anybody know why I took this off of the cylinder and moved those hoses around? 
because they go in certain places on the back. They go on the cert. They go on certain places. Exactly. Right, on my left side is two hoses with two connections. Right. One is going to connect to my dry suit. One is going to connect to my BCD. Okay. My right side always has my breathing air. Okay. Breathing air goes on the right side. All right. So that's why I flipped those hoses around. This is my second stage. Okay. Now, what does it do? It converts this 150 to 200 PSI to ambient air. What I mean by ambient air is right now we're under sea level pressure, right? We're at sea level. So we're at one atmospheric level. That's what pressure we're under, right? So this converts my breathing off of this first stage to the pressure around me, okay? As I descend in the water, the pressure gets much more, okay? Get, as I go deeper, the pressure increases. This allows me to breathe at that pressure because it's going to produce air at the pressure that I'm at. How does it go through that? Is there There's a valve. A valve in there. There's a valve and a burst disc in there so that it, it feels the pressure and it releases the air at that pressure. It's like guys a... Wonder if it's got here, okay, there. so what this does is this is a tuning knob, okay? And what the tuning knob is, this is max and minimum, all right? If I'm in the water and this is face up and this is on max, it's going to go because it thinks that I'm breathing off of it, okay. all right? So when you're not using it, you put it on minimum and it tightens <coughs> that disc so that if it accidentally turns up it doesn't free flow on you you always want if possible your regulator to be down in the water so that it does not free flow okay <coughs> uh, it all what this does <coughs> is increases and decreases your ambient air pressure okay so it's changing that valve that's it inside. changes that valve to where it's either harder or easier to breathe. But you don't have to use that? You do not have to use this. But if this something going wrong with that, just say that valve in there. Goes bad, you yeah. go to your backup and you in the dive. Uh, one's black and one's pink. Uh-huh. Because they didn't have a black one when I went to go buy that. Oh, so it does it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay. No. I thought maybe the color code was for something. I now, typically, the thing, so. typically the orange, if you have a second stage, I said orange, I meant yellow. <laughs> uh, if you have a second stage, typically it is a yellow second stage on a yellow hose because that's your, your backup to your buddy. Okay, so that's why this one is yellow, but the colors other than the yellow, uh, the colors don't don't mean anything. No. Yep. And this is this is a GPS device. Nope. That is air integration. So that will send the pressure of this tank to my <coughs> dive computer. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. I just seen Garmin. So see, on it. there we go. So see how Marco's setup is black as his primary. He's got a yellow hose with a yellow regulator. That's his buddy. So, next, we got to put the BCD on the tank. This is going to be fun. I think this is adjusted for an 80. All right. So, that is loose as all get out. So what do we got to do? We got to adjust the. Uh, we got to adjust the tank band. Can we do like the hand on with this one? Yep. So we can see exactly what we need to do. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's scoot this back a little bit. 
Alright, so I'll put these can bands on. Neil, you wanna get in here? Alright. I'm just, I'm just so like... if you notice, take this, take this big CD and notice it slides up and down. Okay? That should not slide at all. Zero. Alright? Alright. So there's a couple of different styles of <coughs> band for connecting a VCD. Mine are called cam bands. Okay? Quick, quick releases. Alright? But notice how loose they are. Alright? They have got to be tight so that when I'm diving, this tank doesn't slip out. Okay? And then I'm diving with a tank way down here. Okay? So, Kayla, you know how to tighten your cam band? No, but I want to learn. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna release those. All right, you're gonna push this back on both sides. You're gonna pull the Velcro on this one too. Yep. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna snug it up. Just do that there. Now, just like Daryl was saying, notice how low this BCD is sitting, okay? This first stage should be equal, okay, to the back of my head, okay? So this release, this dump valve should be sitting right in between the bottom of this valve and the tank. Okay? You hear that? Thump! That is tight. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So when you go to change a diver's tank, this is important. There's no, no reason why a diver should have to fully undress to take his BCD off, change his tank, and then get redressed. Okay? You should be able to come in here, pop, pop, pull these off. Slap a new tank in, put his regulator on, tighten him up and go. That uh, you two set set that BCD the way it's supposed to be set, lock it down, and then we'll set it next to the. Uh... You want to do it now? Oh, here we go. Okay. Camera. I have a dumb question. Okay. Um, and I haven't gotten to this in my training yet, so it probably is a dumb question. I guess we'll but this. what recommended PSI? Like, let's say you're diving. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that was. So we got to rotate these. Loosen this up. If we're going to tighten it, okay. we pull that back and we undo the oh, buffer and pull. Oh, undo and pull. Yeah, but that's where it's at now. That's so it don't get caught on okay. something. And pull it where your tank falls out then. I thought that's pretty neat. Now he said, he said he wants his head high, so I was thinking this is the shoulders, <coughs> plus you're down low enough you're not on the curve, yeah, curvature of the bottom. Yeah, you put it on that curve, you're going to lose torque on the strap. And the sooner or later it'll work loose. And yeah, then it's an anchor. You got that BCD? Those are called trim pockets, and we're going to put weights in them before, oh, okay. before we... Uh, so I need uh, two fives, which are going to be blue or no? Green. They're actually going to be the green ones. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it stretches out. Okay, is it no pockets? Those are not pockets. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So 
I need uh, about 28 pounds, so I've got 10 there. Okay. So I need another. How did you come to the 28 pounds? I've been diving and I notate what I need with my each set, different set. So we'll do what we call a buoyancy check. Okay. And we'll figure out how much weight you need. And then you just kind of memorize that number. Okay. So I know that I need about 28 pounds. And does that vary dependent upon if you're in a yeah. wetsuit or a dry suit? And the thickness of the wetsuit and the dry suit, okay. the type of gear, the whole nine yards. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we'll grab four and four. Uh, which is 8, which gives us 18. That's a 5. That's this a 5. There should I be a 4, four in that bag. Oh, here's a 4. There's a 4. Okay. okay. That gives us 18. So you're going to put one 4 in this bag. One 4 in this bag. These should, should be, be four uh, pounders, which is going to be eight and eight on each side, which is 16 and 10, which gives me 26 pounds, which, which will be enough. Okay. Done, set up, and the dive ready, ready to be put on the diver. So we will lay this down in the proper configuration. I'll kick this rock out of the way. You want to try to make sure the mat stays clear of large debris, don't you? Yep because you don't want anything to get punctured or anything like that. No, I don't want set it on the You're going to set it on the tank. Well, no, I'm saying I'm not putting it on. I'm worried about that being a yeah. knee shirt. So when you lay it down, go ahead and lay it down. I'll show you what uh, you'll do is you'll take these and you'll set them on the inside. Oh, okay. Yep, just like that. You're good to go. What about these other two? All right. Uh, that, that go into your this this black hose here. You're gonna take it. You're gonna go underneath this, in through here. And it connects on oh, here. Okay. Mm. There you go. Now that's ready to go. All right, so that's the last thing that goes on a diver. So what's the, what else is very last thing that goes on a diver? Gloves. Fins. Gloves. Um, fins. Grab the fins. Yeah. All right, so set these right there so that doesn't roll. Okay, so now that tank's not going anywhere. It's secured. It's good to go, all right? Now, what's the next thing that's gonna go on a diver? I'd say your gloves. Well, you gotta think backwards. Okay. Okay, think backwards, all right? Next thing that's gonna go on is the knee pads. Okay. Okay, so grab that black bag for me, would you? Yeah, might as well throw it up on the bed. So I'm going to lay all this out here so that y'all know what we're working with. And let y'all decide how, how this is going to go on the diver. Neil, you want to put that back over there for me, please, sir? So you can decide how this is going to go on the diver. All right, and what what order it needs to go? The harness would probably be the second to last, wouldn't it? Yes. That would go under the BCD. It goes under the BCD. Okay. There's there's the gear. Now I am going to point this out. Mask. You don't want it to get damaged, right? Diver's mask and diver's computer 
goes in the fence. Okay? So, other than that, set, <clears throat> set that gear up for me the way it's supposed to go. I guess does it sit next to it? Like, on top of it? Just, that way I know the snake it's gotta go on before but it's gotta have his suit on before he puts that on. Yeah. Before he puts his pack on. I would say knee pads first. Are they gonna be inside his suit? I that's a good question. Cameron, are knee pads under your dry suit or on top Over of the top of the dry over. suit. Okay, so I would say dry suit, knee pads. Um, yeah, if you're crawling around on something, you're going to tear your suit. Yeah, so it's It was dry suit, knee pads, gloves, harness, BCD, fins, mask. Yep. Or mask and mask. Yep. What about the, uh, I don't know what the prop, the, uh, Y'all put those big those shorts on over your. I don't wear them over the top of this because I've got the cargo pants or the cargo okay. pockets already on those. Mm -hmm. um, Marco, if he wears his shorts, they'll go underneath the dry suit. Underneath it, okay. Outside. No, no, no. no. Under, underneath. Well, I thought that. What it, I thought it was on the outside. It's under. It's out. on the outside of the dry suit, but it goes underneath. When you're packing it, oh, you're set, okay. it's going to go under the dry suit because dry suit goes on first, then, it goes over. then the shorts go on, then the knee pads go on, then the gloves go on. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it makes sense because I, I just noticed it wasn't here. Here, once this is stacked, I and we have incident command done, the gear is stacked, then do we start gearing up the diver? Mm -hmm. So we also need to grab our dive tender line. And then once Marco's done, uh, if Marco wants y'all to help set up his gear, then y'all uh, set up his gear, then we'll start uh, gearing up the divers.